the terminology that we used in film, you could see confusion on faces of people that were watching film. So that is a, that is a process. You know, I, I've explained to them that I know and I understand that in junior college and in high school, when the ball went through the net, you walked to get the ball out and we walked the ball up the floor. Well, Southern Miss basketball is not about that. Southern Miss basketball is the ball goes through the net, we're off to the races. Because, yes, they just scored on us, but our philosophy is we want to shove it down their throat. So we're coming right back at them. And that is something, again, that we're learning. So that is something that I would encourage you to look for as we make some progress during our non-conference schedule. The third thing that I think that you're going to be excited about is that you're going to witness a bunch of young ladies that have a competitive spirit and a drive and a want to to be their best. And that's going to help everything, all the mistakes that we're going to make, that's going to make it all worthwhile as it all comes together for us to be able to be successful in conference play. So, again, it is going to be a fun year. It's going to be challenging. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be challenging because of so many new players and the things that we'll have to learn from. But I believe that our non-conference schedule is a schedule that will battle test us and prepare us for Conference USA, which I think will be the best it's ever been this year. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Kyle George is going to go out into the, to the media and he's going to get the mic to where it needs to go. We're going to take questions from the media first, so, and then we'll also, uh, if we have a couple of minutes, be able to take a couple other questions as well. Kyle? Coach, uh, with the success that the program's had over the last couple of years, you kind of transitioned from being the hunter to the hunted in Conference USA play. Very aggressive schedule early on. How are you preparing the team for this, for this change moving into the season? Well, I, we're, again, we're having to be very patient, Lanny, uh, because it is very important that we don't go too fast. Because lane line extended means free throw lane extended. The first time we said that, our newcomers looked like I was speaking Greek. And that is what is, we're, we're challenged early. We really are. You would think we would set the schedule because it would be a veteran team, but unfortunately it's not. So we're having to, number one, our staff is having to be very patient in teaching and understanding of how we've got to be able to relate those things to our players for understanding just segments of the court. You know, we have on our transition game, we say you have to get a piece of the eagle before you cross half court. Now, we have been doing that since day one of practice in mid-September when we had where we were allowed to go for the two-hour segment. Today, Lanny, we're still not touching a piece of the eagle in making that decision. So we're, it's a process of us learning every day. And we will be very battle-tested. So our players have got to catch on quicker. We've got to apply from our drill work to actually go in and transition five on five. And that will take time as again, I, and I hate to keep using the word patience, but we have to be very patient to be able to do that. But it's going to take a lot of commitment from individual players to grasp an understanding. It's just like today, tomorrow's our day off. And Coach Jordan Dupuy made a great comment today at the end of practice. It is a physical day off, but it can't be a mental day off. You've got to go through your plays in your mind. You've got to go through our rules and the things we're doing defensively so when we come back Friday, we can remember everything we've worked on because we have our first closed scrimmage on Sunday. Coach, uh, two years ago you kind of revamped your roster. Uh, last year not so much, but this year you kind of had to revamp it again. Um, and you alluded to it a little bit before. Uh, Two years ago, you guys were very much run and gun. Last year was still some of that, but a little bit more methodical with 
with Alex at the point, but now it sounds like you guys are going to be back to that run and gun style this year. What's that kind of yo-yo from season to season? Well, you know, I think that you, you know, as coaches, obviously, you try to recruit players to fit what you believe in, your philosophy, your personality. Um, and, you know, when we lost Jamara, uh, you know, she was off to the races. And last year with Alex being at point guard, it's just a little different scheme that you have to do. And I just think that sometimes you have to adapt as coaches to what you have to be able to provide your team an opportunity to be successful. I can say this year we're going to be a whole lot quicker than we were last year, and we're going to be a whole lot quicker than what we were two years ago. I do think, though, um, Jason, that we're in the same position of the learning process that we were in two years ago. And Jamira Faulkner just made plays for us, you know, when things happened. Last year at the end of the year, Geronte Clemens made plays, she and Tamara Jones, for us. And this year, we're going to have multiple players that can go make plays. We were very limited last year in the number of players that we had that we could just give the ball to and say, go get us a basket. This year, we do have multiple weapons to be able to go get baskets and create and to be able to get some things off the run. Um, our guards are extremely athletic. They are. They're very fast. Um, you know, but in order to make a transition game work, it starts with rebounding, and it starts if it's a made bucket to get the ball out of the net quick. So that's where our post players are having to learn to grab that ball out of the net quick. And many times, to be very honest with you, our guards are so far down the floor, by the time we secure the rebound, they're off to the races. We're having to do some things out of our break for them to cross instead of them just standing down there. But if we can get the ball rebounded, and we can get it out of the net quick, it's going to be some fun basketball here in Reed Green. Coach, with your uh, with Geronte Clemens being your only lone senior, how do you think she's taking a leadership role so far in the offseason? You know, Geronte has really um, grown up a lot, and uh, we've all been very tough on Geronte, to be very honest with you, because she's, she's more a leader by example rather than a vocal leader. Uh, and Brittany Dinkins has assumed that role and has been tremendous of being a vocal leader. Absolutely unbelievable. Geronte Clemens, we've been on her. Uh, Coach Alora Sharp called her out in a circle the other day, really got after. She and I have talked uh, numerous times about her role has to change. She cannot be quiet. She cannot be mute. She has to communicate. And in the last week, we've been able to see that transition for her to be able to really communicate and really step up. Um, but again, she's always been that leader by example, by doing rather than by talking. And it's very critical that she assumes that ownership, being that lone senior and making that happen. Coach, you've talked a little bit this morning about you know, how, how many newcomers you have and how, mu how much the complexion of this team has changed. But uh, how does that relate to the rest of Conference USA? I mean, it looks like there's only one other team with fewer returning starters than, than you have. You know, and I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier when I alluded to that it's going to be the best conference that it's been in quite some time. And the reason for that, Jason, is because of the experience that everyone is returning. Uh, there is tremendous amount of experience across the board from top to bottom in Conference USA. And that's where we're behind the eight ball, to be very honest with you. That's why early, even though we're going to play some very, very good teams, and some teams, honestly, when you look at the schedule that you would mark as an L, there's a loss. But we've got to do our job as a coaching staff and get our players to understand that every time you tip it off it can be anybody's game but also we've got to be able to continue to build that confidence because when you face a schedule like we have in non-conference with a very young inexperienced team like we have their confidence can be crushed it can be crushed and you can't make the comeback in conference play you know because it's just as we all know in life there's always been times that we have lacked confidence and usually when you lack confidence in something you're not very good at it. 
and you know that's where we'll have to be as coaches and we'll have to rely on returning players to help lift those younger ones up and to help give them direction of things that you just you got to play in the moment and prepare prepare for the future play in the moment and prepare for the future and i think that if we do that that we'll be okay but that's where the leadership of some of those returners play a very key role.